Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to this true crime ASMR soft-spoken video. Today we're going to be talking about a disappearance case. I'm doing another lazy video. I am so exhausted from work. I just got out of the shower. I realized I threw on this sweater and there's a nice stain for you to look at. And the reason I put on this sweater is to cover up the giant watermark from my hair. <laughs> so this is a take me as I am kind of video. So, um, uh, this case I didn't hear of and there wasn't a lot of coverage on it, which is so heartbreaking because there still isn't any answers and you just want these family to find answers. So I wanted to shed some light on this case. Today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Charkias Adside. Charkias was born on September 30th, 2000 to parents Tamara Jones and Joshua Adside. He had five siblings and two half-siblings. The family had an apartment located in South Dade, Florida. They had some financial difficulties. Um, they had subsidized rent and didn't really have too much furniture in the apartment. So Jarkeus was often babysat and stayed with Tamara's cousin Gwendolyn. And in 2001 of October, both of Jarkeus' parents were in jail. His mother was arrested for shoplifting charges in Palm Beach County Jail. And his father was awaiting trial for arms trafficking in Broadward County Jail. Due to the arrest, Charkias was in temporary care with Tamara's cousin Gwendolyn Brown and her common-law husband Jeffrey Cochran. The two shared a three-story home in the Miami area with their teenage daughter. In the early mornings of October 18th, 2001, Gwendolyn dropped her teenage daughter off at the bus stop and walked back home where Jeffrey was still sleeping in the second floor bedroom with Jarkeus. As she approached her front door, she heard movements behind the bushes. Three men with guns jumped from the bushes and grabbed her, brought her inside, bound her with duct tape, and asked for money. The men ordered Gwendolyn to walk upstairs and into Jeffrey's bedroom. They tied Jeffrey up with duct tape, grabbed their, the sleeping Jarkeus, and left the room. The terrified couple listened through the walls as the men ransacked their home for money and valuables. The intruders overturned furniture, threw clothes, tore open ceiling vents, and then the couple reports hearing a single gunshot. The three intruders fled the home, and for the next two hours, the couple struggled and eventually freed themselves from their bindings with a pair of scissors. After searching the home, they realized Archaeus was gone. The intruders appeared to have taken off with him, and around 8.30 a.m., the couple called 911 to report Charkeus outside missing. So the time between the abduction and the time that the couple called the police, it would have been about two hours. First responders walked into the scene and the home was immediately searched for Charkeus. Despite the robbers' demands, no money was missing and although the couple reported only one gunshot, there were several blood splatters on the wall. A white bed sheet was soaked red, and this indicated that if the blood came from Jarkeus, it would have caused serious injury but would have most likely been fatal. The couple claimed the blood stains were not there prior to the robbery. In addition to the stained bed, blood was also found in other areas of the home, as well as several grams of cocaine. A few hours later, police launched their first search efforts for Jarkeus. A pilot flew a special U.S. Custom helicopter with heat sensors, 
a dive team sifted through a nearby canal, and bloodhounds tried to follow the scent of blood. Unfortunately, all found no signs of the missing toddler. Police also questioned neighbors, and one man reported a suspicious individual near the couple's front door around the time of the disappearance. It is unclear if any heard the supposed gunshot. So investigators also looked closer at Gwendolyn and Jeffrey and discovered that Jeffrey had a criminal history as a drug trafficker and had spent nearly 10 years in prison. After his release, Jeffrey suffered a stroke that permanently damaged his eyesight. Due to his health and financial difficulties, he was in the process of applying for social security. Gwendolyn had left her job as a truck driver and was receiving disability payments. Shortly after the abduction, police arrested the couple for drug charges related to the cocaine that was discovered inside the home. Gwendolyn and Jeffrey told police they did not recognize the intruders and described them as being black men. Composite sketches of the three gunmen were released, but no one came forward with any information. Tamara Jones posted a bond and was released on October 21st, three days after her son went missing. I can't even imagine three days of not being able to... Oh my gosh, that would have been so terrible. She immediately becomes involved in trying to find answers to what happened to her son. She states at this point she is hoping the blood found in the home does not belong to her son. The following week, the police made several visits to the house to collect additional evidence. During one visit, they brought cadaver dogs to search inside and throughout the yard. Unfortunately, they found nothing, and each day increased the likelihood that something terrible had happened to him. On November 10th, the lab results returned. The blood inside the home belonged to Jarkeus. According to Detective Tim Ryan, the blood was all over the place, suggesting that someone injured the toddler in multiple rooms. Police checked with area hospitals and clinics, but none had admitted baby boys matching Jarkeus' description. The police did not wholly verify the couple's story. Detective Ryan pointed out possible holes in the story. Jarkeus' blood was found all over the house, and it was as if the men had moved him from room to room injuring him in each place. Additionally, the detective found it odd how they said they used scissors to free themselves from the duct tape, and this process they said took them hours. Detective Ryan says that the couple were not ruled out, but police needed to find out who Cochran owed money to due to his past crimes related to drugs. Later in interviews, Jeffrey admitted to a reporter that he had retained adversaries from his drug trafficking days. However, when asked what he thinks happened to Jarkeus, he gave a cryptic answer. He stated, man, I don't know. I guess my past is finally catching up to me. Investigators have publicly expressed skepticism of the couple's account. Police state they do not know if his parents' incarceration had anything to do with the case. Jarkeus' mother believes the couple. She stated, I feel that maybe they're not telling everything that happened, but I don't think they have done anything. So as for theories in this case, the first is that the couple's account of the events did actually occur that possibly connections to past drug involvements made them a target for a robbery, and perhaps since they had taken custody of Jarkeus, 
The men assumed the home would be empty besides the couple after their daughter went to school. And they didn't know that Jarkeus was going to be inside. But it still leaves a lot of uncertainty to why they would have abducted and murdered him. He was a baby, so there was no reason to think that he'd be a threat. Um, especially because they left the couple unharmed. And also the fact that they didn't um, take anything. You know, there was clearly drugs and money in the home that were not taken. Police have strongly indicated disbelief in this story, however. So there's also the possibility his parents' involvement in crimes may have been the motive, and possibly Jarkeus was the intended target. Um, but again, with no money, drugs, anything taken, it's kind of bizarre that nothing was missing despite the demands that the that the men made, apparently, about money. Um, it seems like they just ransacked the home and took Jarkeus. Some believe the couple had murdered him either by accident or on purpose. There's a possibility with the drugs found in the home, possibly the couple had killed him while on drugs. In an attempt to cover it up, they created the story of the robbery. Police and others state disbelief in the couple's timeline of being able to get out of the constraints in that two-hour period, especially having a pair of scissors. So it's speculated that maybe the two-hour gap accounts for possibly hiding the baby. Um, and maybe because there was so much blood to clean, they created this story to cover up the crime. It seems the evidence and amount of blood indicates some kind of blunt force trauma or gunshot. You know, I'm not sure if they were able to indicate like any kind of ladder and, and if that could say if it was a gunshot or another form. But it just seems the couple, if they did kill him, it would have had to be after dropping the daughter off. Because, you know, doing that with her in the home would be a lot. So of course the question is why? And the odd part of this case is that the idea of after being injured or killed, he was carried from room to room, or he was injured in most multiple rooms, it's kind of the odd part of the case. Turkeus's mother still holds on to hope that her son is alive and healthy. She believes her son is possibly being cared for by someone else. Jarkeus has never been heard from again, and his abductors have never been identified. This case remains unsolved. If you have inf any information concerning the disappearance of Jarkeus Adside, contact the Miami-Dade Police Department at 305-471-8475. Oh, this case was really sad. It's a baby and a mother who doesn't have any answers to what happened. It's got to be the worst thing in the world, but I wanted to shed some light on the case. You know, this occurred in 2001, so, you know, if if he is still alive, then he, he wouldn't be very old. <laughs> um, but it's a sad case all around. Um, I did want to thank everyone for the comments, the likes, the subscriptions. It's meant more than I think I can put words in, but it's, it's meant so much to me. So thank you so Again, if 
any recommendations for cases, I'm writing them down and would love to do them. So, I hope that you are having a good day or night wherever you are and I hope that you have a good day tomorrow and I will see you in my next video.